Hey guys, I'm Aaron, and today we're going to look at the top five issues you might run into if you don't use groups and components in SketchUp. So we've done a few videos before talking about why groups are important and the power of components with, you know, duplicating geometry, that sort of thing. But we want to do a video specifically on the problems you will run into, not may, you will run into these sooner or later if you don't put your geometry groups. I know it's part of the appeal of SketchUp is you download it and you immediately start modeling. You just put in lines, edges, faces, push, pull, just start into it right away. And it's super easy. But what you do need to do is be intentional about grouping that geometry. Otherwise, you're going to hit these issues and we're taking what those issues are right now. All right, so we're starting right here with a couple of signs. Then for all intents and purposes, they're the same. But as soon as we start trying to like manipulate them or, or interact with them, we'll see the difference. So if I pick right here, you see that I have a group right here. In fact, if I double click, I come in here and I'll have multiple groups. So this one on the left is in groups. If I come over here and pick something, you'll see that face will just light up right there. So I'm over here on the right side, actually looking at a bunch of raw geometry. So we are going to look at the difference and the issues that you're going to run into modeling like this instead of like this. So at the end of the day, everything looks the same. And well, the reason it looks the same is because I modeled this in group and exploded it out for this example. I don't know if I could have gotten to this level of geometry correctly without using groups along the way. And that's because of the first issue we run into, which is sticky geometry. So if I come in here and I hop in here, I want to move one of these light bulbs, for example, click into my groups a couple times. Here's this one. Uh, I'm going to go to view component, edit and turn off high dress model. So I can see the whole model as I do this. So if I grab this and I do go to move and I pick it up, I can take it off here. No problem. Easy. You know, uh, the star, let's go look at the star. So if I pick this star and I grab it. I can slide it away from the rest of geometry. No problem. If I come over here, we're going to come out of this group and I come over here and I'm going to grab that same light bulb. Well, one of the light bulbs and I go to move it and I'm going to, I get this thing happening, right? So not what I want. In fact, if I look at this, all this geometry is stuck together. So any place geometry touches other geometry, if I try to move that, I'm going to get, this one is not even letting me move it because it's so, uh, there we go. Oh, yep. There we go. See that? That's what we call a horror show. That's a mess. If I try to move this, that's going to cause geometry to overlap and just you, just you. That's what's going to happen there. It's going to be you. So sticky geometry is the first thing. Sticky geometry is a great part of SketchUp and how it works. When you bring two faces together, they automatically connect, but it's not always what you want. If you want to maintain separate pieces, you will have to group those pieces. So that's number one is sticky geometry. Sticky geometry is great until you don't want it to happen, then it is kind of painful. The second thing, point number two, is organization. In what I mean by organization is not just, okay, in here, this is all just a bunch of faces, but how do I actually have these, these, these items interact? So right here, like I said, this is one piece. So if I want to move this one piece, I come in here to move, I can grab this, I move my whole sign around, easy as anything, right? It goes beyond that because if I come in here, I'm going to double click into this group. And then like, this is what I was saying is these lights then are in separate groups. I actually have them in quadrants up here, the welcome sign. I have that as one big entity. But if I double click in, I have my neon where the, the letters are as a separate one. I have my letters themselves as a separate one, the neon circles, another group. Uh, if I click in here, I can see I actually have my geometry for the circle. All of this is put into group inside of group inside of group. So it makes it very easy to jump to the geometry I want. Some people go, oh, that's a whole lot of clicking to get down to the geometry. Yeah, it's a couple extra clicks, but it also prevents me from having to work to get this E and pull it off, right? Because I can just double click into the group and I can grab that geometry. It's right there. It's simple to move around. Uh, and that happens because I use nesting group. So it's a group inside of a group inside of a group. And that happens, obviously doesn't happen over here, but it does happen as you start to use groups. It just makes your model easier to work with. In fact, over here, our outliner, 
our outliner is going to actually show these groups and where everything is. So here's my bulb group, obviously, because there's a bunch of bulbs in there. And it's going to go through and actually control all that. But none of this happens if you don't have anything in there. So I could have been a little bit more intentional about my group names, actually, now that I'm in here, I see that. But this level of nesting does not and will not happen. And here's my welcome group. Is that welcome up here? And I can see where each of these pieces are, the circles, where the geometry inside the circles are. That's all because this is nested as opposed to over here. This isn't even showing up in the outliner because only groups and components show up. So all of this is this over here. If I pick on that, that's all over here. Over here, none of this shows up in outliner because none of this is in any kind of groups. So that's not item number two. Item number three is geometry on tags. So here's what I mean by that. So let's go ahead and expand our tags window over here. So again, this kind of falls into organization as well, but it, there's a specific issue related to tags. Uh, if we look at this, our, our, our A plus, our star model over here, if I start taking off some of these letters, or I'm sorry, <laughs> letters, some of these tags, I'm gonna turn these tags off and you can see the pieces disappearing, right? Turn the neon off. Turn my circles off, turn my star off, toggle my structure on and off, and you can see see how it goes away. This is because everything is put on tags and it's easy to get rid of pieces. If you try to do that over here, you can put geometry onto tags. It is recommended against, we have a whole video, I'll try to remember to put that in the description on the kind of problems that can happen when you have geometry on tags as opposed to groups on tags, which is what you should be doing. But this is the kind of thing you run into. So I can come in and put geometry on tags and then I can try to make stuff disappear. So I put some geometry onto there. Um, so I didn't, it wasn't complete. It's also difficult to try to grab exact faces and edges when they're not in groups and, and tag them. Um, but it does cause other problems. This is why, this is a mess. Turning things on and off, random geometry. The way to do this is to put everything modeled on tags, raw geometry, always on tags. And then as you group stuff, add it to the tags. It's gonna make it easier, cleaner to work with. Uh, you're not gonna have stuff like this where I have these random faces laying around because it's so hard to select everything. But it actually leads right into another reason why it's so important to group geometry, which is our fourth point. So number four, this is geometry merging with unseen other geometry, <laughs> invisible geometry. So let's say for whatever reason, I want to break apart this the top section of that structure piece right there. So I grab a rectangle and I go, okay, so I'm gonna go from here to uh, here. I wanna draw a rectangle right here. I'm gonna get this message, this message is especially startling if you're very new to SketchUp. Your recent operation has caused visible geometry to merge with existing geometry that is hidden. The only option you have is okay. There is no undraw my geometry. There is no make my geometry visible again. All I can hit is okay. And I don't know exactly what happened right now, but I know something happened to the geometry I just tried to draw and some portion of it didn't show up, but some portion did and I don't know why. This is what happens when you draw on top of geometry that is on another tag. So right here what's happening is if I turn this on again, this, this face right here was intersected with when I drew my rectangle on top of it. So that face merged and all I got were the two new edges that were created as a result of that drawing. That's confusing. That's why you should put it in groups. Basically, if boil it all down to this will be way less confusing to model if I remember to group things. I'm going to undo a couple times because I don't want whatever I just did there to be. And let's go look over here real quick. All right. So similarly, I have geometry here that's turned off. And let's say if for whatever reason I wanted to come in here and I'm going to draw another rectangle here. I'm going to draw it on this face like, like this. Uh, there we go. I'm just going to draw a rectangle right like that. It just draws a rectangle. So even though that geometry directly overlaps this geometry, it doesn't care because this geometry 
that's in my structure piece, the, the, the what's in here in this blue section is part of a group. So I can draw geometry on top of another geometry all day and it's going to be okay with it. SketchUp doesn't care if I do that as long as they are in separate groups. So you can't accidentally merge with other geometry if that geometry is in a group. So even if it's hidden, even if I can't see it, I still can't accidentally merge with it. All right. Let's look at one more point. Point number five is modeling duplicating geometry without components. That is a painful process. Modeling is not so bad. You can use the stamp tool. You can use the array tool to get some stuff in here. But let's say for whatever reason I come in and I decide, oh, you know what's supposed to have happened right here? When I did this, this was supposed to be gold. So I'm going to grab uh, my paint bucket. I'm going to sample this color and put it right here. Done. Done. Right? They're all gold now. No problem. Piece of cake. Over here, guess what I'm going to have to do here? I'm going to come over here. I'm going to sample this. And I'm going to paint here. Then I'm going to paint here. Then I'm going to paint here. There's a hundred of these little extruded circles around here. And I'm going to have to swing around my model and find the best way to see each one of these. And this is not difficult. This is not hard to do, but it is time consuming. So even if I can, you know, that's 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 like a minute and a half if I can click each one in about a second. As opposed to a single click over here with components. So leveraging the power of components is a huge part of properly using groups and components and preventing you from having to do this kind of mind numbing work because, you know, this is the way SketchUp was built. It was built to use components so you don't ever have to manipulate those repeating members ever. So definitely a big point there with not having to mess with those components. All right, so quick rundown, those five points again. First one, sticky geometry. Number one, it's the biggest thing. Sticky geometry, you stop items from sticking together by putting them in groups. So, so important. Number two, organization. Put groups inside of groups inside of groups, makes them easier to get to. And then you can also use the outliner. Number three, geometry on tags. If you put geometry on tags, it will always cause problems. Check the video out, link down below. It's an older one, but the, it's still there. It's still the way it works. Uh, much easier to do it the right way and put groups on tags. Number three, you don't have to worry about geometry, merging with invisible geometry because it's in groups. You don't have to worry about it. It's easy. Uh, and number five, duplicating geometry is automatic with components. You won't run into any of these issues if as you finish modeling, I always think of grouping as a thing. When I group a thing that is by itself and I want it to just be itself, I put it in a group. So start modeling, stop, put it in a group, start modeling next piece, stop, put it in a group, and just move on through your model that way. You may end up with a bunch of groups and oh, I got 50 groups in this model. That's not bad. That's an okay thing. It's better to have a hundred groups in your model than to have thousands of random faces and edges just floating around interacting with each other. Much cleaner way to model, better way to model, and the way you're supposed to model in SketchUp. If you like that video, click like down below. And if you haven't already, please do subscribe. We create several videos around here each and every week and you'll be notified of all of them if you subscribe. Most importantly though, Leave us a comment down below. Have you been bitten by this? Have you have you been a random geometry modeler and seen the light and come to groups? Or if you haven't, what else do you need? <laughs> what other arguments do you need to have quelched in order? Is that the right word? Quelched? Quelched? Squashed? What else do I got to say to convince you that you should be using groups? Let me know down below. And if you have an idea that you think would make a cool video that we haven't done before, or maybe something we have touched on, you think we should go deeper, let me know about that too. We like making these videos a lot. We like them even more when they're showing something you want to see. Thank you.